As we bring the uh, dish back, we'll use the nudge keys and nudge that up just a little bit. And then we'll also grab both of these objects. And with our nudge keys, once again, we'll just simply move that up just a little bit. We turn our grid back on. We can make the grid invisible or invisible at any stage of our design process. And I'm going to add some additional supports on the outside of that dish. Uh, maybe create a cylinder with a specific radius and height. And I'm going to rotate and copy that. And I'm going to put the Make Clones option on. I'll talk about that in just a moment. So we'll rotate, make multiple copies of that. Now even though these are clones, I can still move each of these objects as an individual object all by itself. Or I can move and transform them as clones. So as I move the one object in or out, you can see that that is applied to all of the clones. Even drastic changes. For example, if I were to change the shape, use the deformation tool and grab hold of the top and maybe take that support and bend it to the side. Notice that that deformation is applied to all the clones. Even other changes such as uh, doing a Boolean union and unioning this with a mounting bracket and notice that that change is propagated through all of the clones. Inside the space frame structure of the dish is a communications package which has the servo motors and electronics for the satellite dish and will create a mounting enclosure for that. We're not sure what we want yet, so we'll use the uh, design part of Form Z to quickly lay out some 3D form and then modify that uh, into the shape that we want to use Form Z as an integral part of that design process. So what we'll do is just sort of quickly sketch out a 3D volume of the intended uh, area that will be taken up by the 3D enclosure. And notice that when you create any object in Form Z, you can move the different topological levels. I can move a face, move a segment, or move a single point. So I can quickly lay out that 3D volume and then modify that as my design changes. We can also add additional volume to our object by using any of the drawing tools and sketching right on any face on any part of any object and simply extruding that and pulling it out to add volume. And notice that when we uh, add additional volume by pulling on the surface, uh, Form Z does uh, the Boolean operation behind the scenes to be sure that all that topological information is then resolved to get good, clean geometry. We can also uh, use the same technique to subtract volume. Instead of uh, drawing on the shape and pulling out, we'll actually push in, which will create a recessed cavity. Maybe instead of a transparent box, we can change the surface style color and give it a solid opaque color. And you can delete any face or segment or point of the object to further modify it that way. Let's add a cross break on the back. There's a triangulation tool. Just choose the triangulation method that you want. Click on the face and it will automatically insert the segments for you and we can move the point to control the height of that cross break. Let's insert a couple of additional holes on the back by simply drawing right on the face of the object and having that hole automatically penetrate through to create the openings on the side. There is an unfold tool to simply click on the object and forms you will unfold your geometry. If we undo, uh, maybe we want to add a little more detail to this. Let's have a mounting flange on the bottom. We can use the derivative tools, which allow us to derive objects from existing geometry that's already there. Let's do a 3D enclosure, give it the wall width, and extrude it to the height that we want. And let's insert some additional holes, once again, by simply sketching at any part of the object to insert the opening. Let's make multiple copies of that. Just simply highlight the hole and drag and pull it to add additional openings into the object. Maybe instead of a metal box, to save weight, we'll create uh, maybe the protective enclosure with foil. 
So let's undo it maybe a couple steps back and apply a surface style texture color uh, that looks like foil, something like, like this. And instead of the hard edges that are there, we want to sort of wrap it around our object. So what we'll do is use the surface subdivision tools. Using the T-subs tool, we can increase the amount of curvature. And as we move that slider back and forth, it just sort of curves or smooths out uh, that original cage that we had created. And this works with any type of geometry. And we still have access to that original cage. So we can still edit uh, the points, the segments of the object, and still modify and reshape it in its surface subdivided form. So maybe grab this segment, pull that down, and by modifying that cage, it will then update that subdivided surface. In this same area are some pressurization tanks, which we can create some uh, nice transitional lofts as it goes from one tank into the other. Uh, there's a few different ways of doing this, actually. Uh, earlier, we looked at the blend tool. We could use that here. But uh, let's look at some other techniques that can be used. Uh, one is the loft tool. Create a series of 2D cross sections. Forms a loft and a smooth surface through all those cross sections. You can also create a series of profile lines, as many lines as you want, uh, using any of the drawing tools, vector line, spline, uh, create sort of the outside silhouette lines. And there's a uh, NURBS cross-section tool, which will then automatically create a series of cross-sections for you. Then, of course, from those 2D cross-sections that we have, there is a Create Surface option. So it'll not only create the cross-sections, but also loft a surface through all those lines. And just like any other object, we still have access to the control parameters to still modify it after it's created. Now here's one other method that can be used, and this is my favorite because uh, you don't have to create any 2D cross sections or any loft lines. Just simply highlight the edges of the existing geometry that's already there. So if I highlight these three edges of the existing flange and the mounting bracket, I can go to the uh, loft tool. It forms it will automatically loft through these existing objects. And you still have access to modify the lofting uh, parameters through each of these highlighted segments. For example, the second one here, I can modify the surface parameterization settings for how it lost through that particular part of the lofting process.